Hey everyone, DJ Short from Roto World here, uh, back for our weekly fantasy baseball Q and A, 1 p.m. Eastern time, every Tuesday. I will be here to take your questions. We could talk fantasy baseball. We could talk regular baseball. Uh, a lot going on right now in uh, as far as news is concerned. It's been a pretty interesting morning here. The Brian Reynolds extension, and hey, what a time! to be a Pirates fan. And you haven't been able to say that in a while, but uh, the Pirates 16 and seven, the best record in the National League, first place in the NL Central, won seven straight. Uh, actually, uh, myself and Shelly Bear straight, uh, we broke down the Pirates in the Circling the Bases podcast yesterday. Subscribe to that podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, so we broke down, you know, what we thought of this hot, hot start from the Pirates. Unfortunately, O'Neill Cruz, not a part of it. It would be much more uh, interesting, potentially, if uh, he was part of that mix. Unfortunate he's hurt, but still, uh, you know, a lot of surprise performers on this team. Andrew McCutcheon back in the fold, of course, but Johan Oviedo has been a nice surprise so far. Jack Sawinski has been swinging a hot bat. Connor Joe, like, certainly some players to keep an eye on uh, at the very least in mixed leagues, if not a pickup uh, as well. So uh, really fun stuff going on there. And then we see the extension today between the Pirates and Brian Reynolds, eight years, 106 million. Uh, and if Reynolds can maintain his production here, this looks like a great uh, deal for the Pirates. And for so long, it seemed like, we were talking about potential trade fits for Brian Reynolds. Like it was a foregone conclusion. He would not stay. And if I would have had my guess, even a couple of months ago, I would say Brian Reynolds would be traded. So, Hey, good on the pirates for making this happen. Keeping Brian Reynolds in the fold at a time when, yeah, I mean, they're the morale of the fan base is high. Uh, do I think they can keep it up? I, I have my doubts. Uh, Obviously, I think the cream, the cream will probably rise to the top in this division in the NL Central, but you have to feel good for Pirates fans. And, and I think this is a great job by Pirates ownership, um, you know, especially after losing O'Neill Cruz. You could have seen this maybe uh, tail spinning, but uh, especially, you know, if they were unable to work out this extension with Reynolds, uh, but to see them get this done, this is this is huge. Um, for a long time, the team record uh, contract for the Pirates was a Jason Kendall deal, <laughs> uh, $60 million contract. Uh, Key Brian Hayes was signed to an extension last year for $70 million, and now this is the new team record uh, for Brian Reynolds here. The Pirates' best start since 1992. Uh, so good on them. The Rays have won six in a row as they just continue to amaze Wander Franco, a great night offensively and defensively with that barehanded catch. The Orioles have won seven in a row. So cool to see, you know, teams like the Pirates and the and the Orioles thriving right now. I wanted to give you guys a few minutes to get in here uh, and start submitting your questions. I'll be here for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, we'll, we'll get into whatever you guys have on your mind. Again, we can talk um, baseball news. We can talk fantasy baseball. Uh, if you got any you know, thoughts on like prop bets or anything like that. I'm, I'm game for whatever you guys want to talk about. So let's see. First question here from Cruz Padron. Added Zach Eflin as a fifth starting pitcher, replacing Patrick Sandoval on a five by six, 10 team. Was it an upgrade, downgrade or wash? Uh, well, I liked kind of the tweaks that the Rays made with Zach Eflin going into the season. And, uh, you know, Signing him during the offseason, I, I think to me was an indication that they saw something there they they can tweak. I, I thought the early signs were promising prior to the injury. Now that he's back, we'll see if he can really take off. But obviously the, the Rays offense being a buzzsaw a lot better than I thought they were going to be. Uh, I think it makes sense to to take a shot on, here on Eflin and, and see if you know the Rays can work their magic. Doesn't always work, uh, but uh yeah, I, I'm I'm into this move. So I, I think it's not necessarily a downgrade or a wash, but it, you know, when you're tinkering with, you know, that fifth kind of starter, fifth, sixth starter in a mixed league rotation, those guys are very, very fluid. Uh, so I certainly like the gamble there on Eflin. Up next, 
Who do you like better in tonight's Oakland versus LA matchup? Go with the upside of Miller uh, or go with Canning against the feeble A's lineup. So yeah, let me bring up everything I'm seeing here. So yeah, let's see. Canning against Miller. So this, I think, shines a light on what makes Mason Miller kind of a tricky pickup in a in a mixed league. The A's are terrible, um, maybe historically bad. We'll see. How many innings is Mason Miller going to throw? Like, he just hasn't thrown that many innings. Could he throw five? Like, I don't even know if he can qualify for a win. So whatever you're getting at a Miller is, you know, strikeouts, ratios, that kind of stuff. That's helpful, but it's it's just a case-to-case sort of basis. I think at a standard mixed league, like 10, 12 team, like you probably have better options. I would go for Canning to get the win and get the volume tonight, but I still think Miller is is viable. It just, it really depends uh, from league to league. But yeah, I'd say generally in more shallow leagues that uh, there are probably just better options out there than Mason Miller for this year. That will change very, very quickly. And just a reminder here, with all this news coming in today, this has been a busy news day so far, and we'll get to more of it here in a second. Reminder, download the RotoWorld app to receive breaking player news all season long. Stay ahead of the competition by favoriting players on your roster. Get the latest injury updates, player news, and much, much more delivered right to your phone. It's available in your app store today. Definitely check it out. So if you were checking our player news feed today, you might have seen a few things. First, the Diamondbacks demoted Jake McCarthy to AAA, which is a big blow. Uh, I mean, McCarthy was generally in that like 100 100 range in fantasy drafts this past spring, Uh, was a surprise contributor last season, hit 283. But so far this season, 143, really, really struggling through 22 games, has lost some playing time in recent days to Pavin Smith, uh, who's been swinging a hot bat. And uh, Matthew Poliot, our Hall of Famer on the Rota World staff here, he pointed out something interesting on Twitter earlier today, just kind of showing that last year maybe he overachieved a little bit. McCarthy, remember, 283 batting average last year, 427 slugging percentage. Well, expected stats last year, 249 XBA, uh, 357 expected slugging. And now he's on the other side where maybe he was a little fortunate last year. He's a little unlucky this year because basically the expected stats are basically the same as last year. Not to say we won't see Jake McCarthy again, but I think maybe if you're, you know, if you're in ten team league, certainly you can move on. Twelve team, I think it's just a case to case basis. But that's a tough one if you're banking on him being maybe your second uh, outfielder in a mixed league, which is possible. Uh, A couple sort of speculation type of situations going on right now. Joe Noga of Cleveland.com speculates that the Guardians are likely promoting uh, prospect right-hander Tanner Bybee to start Wednesday against the Rockies. Uh, Of course, we saw Logan Allen over the weekend. He he looked great. Bybee's quite different. Logan Allen, more, uh, more of a soft tosser you know certainly relative to today's environment uh meanwhile Bybee like brings the heat uh he's looked really good so far this year 176 era through three starts uh i i think yeah you stream him against the rockies again this is in cleveland so i think that's a that's a viable play i think you go for that i'm not sure if this is going to be a long-term situation but Bybee's a name you should definitely be excited about The Diamondbacks also optioned Dre Jamison to triple A. So they're going to need a starter this weekend. So there's speculation out there. Theo Mackey of the Arizona Republic uh, reports that Brandon Fought could start this weekend against the Rockies. That start in Colorado. So be be careful. I don't think you're necessarily going to want to start Fought there, but um, he's the real deal as well. Not not like the crazy electric stuff uh, that Bybee has, but still. Um, very, very exciting. Led the minor leagues in strikeouts uh, last season. I think he had 10 strikeouts in his most recent start, or no, eight strikeouts in his most recent start in AAA last week. So uh, Fought's a guy 
where you don't have to worry about workload either. He's going to throw a lot of innings and he should be uh, mixed league relevant as soon as he comes up. So I want to get that stuff out of the way real quick so we can get to some of these questions here. So daily fab is 20% get by BM King myself. He's actually dropped yesterday. Uh, I don't know, only because I'm not sure if he's up to stay. You know, like I'm not sure how much of my budget I would use uh, for Bybee right away. You know, they're going to have guys coming back. Tristan McKenzie too. Logan Allen looked good in his, his debut. I know there's some multiple injuries in that Guardians rotation. Maybe there's a shot, but just not sure. Uh, so Matt Mervis and uh, Christopher Morrell are both uh, tearing it up right now in AAA. I would rather stash Mervis personally. Uh, I think the upside is higher there. Um, Cubs aren't getting a lot out of Eric Hosmer, and that was a weird siding with me to begin with. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Cubs move on very, very soon and Mervis to get the call. I think Mervis is a little more interesting uh, to me. What is your opinion on counting wins versus quality starts in a categories league? I mean, I guess I could be moved either way on that. I, I think for a while when, you know, wins kind of fell out of favor that quality starts made sense, but, it, you know, pitchers aren't necessarily pitching deep enough into games to make that worthy. So uh, I've played in both. Uh, I think quality starts, you know, adds an interesting wrinkle to think about and kind of that added strategy is fun too. I, I like playing in a kind of a diverse uh, amount of league. So I wouldn't say that I, I dislike either uh, wins or, you know, fickle and tricky and not a true determination of who's, you, you know, the best pitcher. But uh, usually if you look at the quality starts leaders at the end of the season, you know, you're going to see some pretty good pitchers there. So uh, I, I like both. I, I think quality starts is a fun little challenge uh, if your league wants to try it uh, one year. So, yeah, thoughts on Logan Allen. Everyone is in on him after just one start worth a pickup in a 12 team points leagues again i'm not sure i mean he looks so good in his debut I, I i think i think i'm in on it but also wondering what this guardians rotation is going to look like you know a month from now um when their injured starters come back so i uh, i think he's not going to be as dominant as he looked in his debut. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he's going to be the guy who's going to be piling up a ton of strikeouts. So if that's what you're thinking moving forward, like I don't think he's that pitcher, you know? Uh, but, you know, when it goes to Bybee and Allen, like the Guardians are really good at developing pitching. Gavin Williams is in their system too and uh, should be up. I mean, he's getting close as well. Um, the Guardians know what they're doing as far as this, this is concerned. So. Yeah, I think he's worth a pickup for now. And again, like I said earlier, kind of that back end rotation, you know, number five, number six, starting a mixed league staff. I think it's fluid. I think you could try, you know, different matchups, you know, the hot hand, that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, as long as Allen's up, uh, thing makes sense. So uh, rank the following pitchers rest of season in the quality starts league. Here we go. Um Heaney, Contreras, Lauer, Marquez. Well, Marquez, I know he he recently had this forearm issue. I think he's good for his next start, but uh, I'm not into that so much. I think I would go Heaney, Lauer, Contreras, Marquez. Uh, you know, Marquez and Coors Field, meh. And the the recent like forearm stuff, I'm a little leery about him, so uh, I would I would skip that. Um, let's see up next. Which would you rather have Tyler Malley or Andrew Heaney? I think it's Malley for me. Uh, I think Heaney's we've seen, you know, what, what the ceiling is with Heaney. The floor is that he gets hurt, which like tends to happen with Andrew Heaney. Uh, so if you're shooting for the upside, I think Heaney's the play. If you want kind of the, more of the steady option, maybe not like the sexiest option, I think Mally's probably the guy here. 
Uh, Richard with a question. Best starting pitcher prospect to hold. Uh, Matthew Libertor with the Cardinals. Uh, Gavin Stone. And then uh, Abbott, who was just promoted uh, by the Reds to AAA, is not far off. He's got a lot of helium. I'm sure the Reds will want to see Abbott get, you know, a good amount of starts before we see him in the majors. Gavin Stone is like, he's on the verge. Um, but I think Libertor is the closest. And with the velocity on the rise, we've I actually have gotten a couple of questions on uh, Libertor here in the pipeline of questions. I think Libertor will get his chance very, very soon. That added velocity makes him more interesting. Uh, I think he's you know, long deserving of an extended opportunity, but adding this velocity makes him even more interesting. Is he a frontline starting pitcher? Probably not, but I think he can stick in a rotation for a while. Joey Lucchese has always been an intriguing arm, very similar to Eric Lauer. Is there a shot for him to earn a permanent spot in the rotation, pushing Peterson out? Well, we'll see. You know, I actually recommended Joey Lucchese in, uh, Today's pickup of the day column, which if you go to NBC Sports Edge, uh, you could check it out there. Um, I also recommend it, Brian De La Cruz, but go go to NBCSportsEdge.com. Check out our latest pickups of the day column uh, to see that. Um, yeah, Lucchese coming up last week. You know, the Mets have had really bad luck with injuries in their rotation. Verlander, Quintana, now Carrasco. Shares are suspended for 10 games for that whole sticky situation so Lucchese comes up first start back from Tommy John surgery his return in the majors uh, he had this Tommy John surgery two years ago and he looked really good um, and we know Lucchese's you know he he barely was cracking 90 in that start uh, uh last Friday against the Giants but it didn't matter like he racked up the strikeouts uh the churve was in effect there he's not gonna be like a dominant pitcher like we saw against the Giants in every start but yeah, if Peterson's struggling, um, and Carrasco, who knows how long he'll be out. Quintana's out until midseason. Verlander should be back soon. Uh, Scherzer should be back this weekend. So uh, we'll see those guys come back. But yeah, I mean, if Peterson or McGill are underachieving and Casey continues to pitch well, like, I, I, yeah, I think he can uh, take a spot in this rotation. The Mets are not going to mess around. This is a team with designs on winning the division and go, making a deep run in October. So yeah, I don't think they're going to mess around. I think it's all going to be all about results. Um, Lucchese's next start is against the Nationals. So he should absolutely be picked up this week and he's available in over 80% of Yahoo leagues right now. So um, take that for what it's worth, but he should be rostered. Uh, Matt with a question. Let's see if I can... Who should I have for Roto scoring fantasy baseball currently this week? Gunnar Henderson, Patrick Wisdom, Taylor Walls, Brian Hayes, Josh Rojas, Justin Turner, John Birdie, Josh Young, or Brian Anderson at third base. Ooh, that's a lot of a lot of names, and uh, hard for me to like even think about all of their schedules this week. Hmm. Uh, that's a tough one. I mean, Wisdom's power has been really impressive. If you, if you want to go with that, uh, Cabrian Hayes has been. You know, hitting a little bit better, showing signs. He's got some speed. John Birdie, speaking of speed, is is pretty bankable as well. Uh, I think I'd just chase the power with wisdom and, and see where that takes me maybe in the short term. Uh, quickest answer I can give you uh, without really being able to look um, at, you know, the schedules and stuff like that. John, should I drop, say, Suzuki or Starling Marte to stream starters in my 18 daily? They are not starting for me. I mean, to be in an 18 kind of league, yeah, I mean, I guess you <laughs> you got to uh, you know, make some tough decisions all the time. And that is a tough one. I, I think I would keep Starling Marte. Uh, I think the most encouraging thing about Marte so far is he stealing bases again? He's very active on the base pass. Seemingly every time he's on base, it looks like either he wants to steal or he does. Um, so yeah, I think getting that speed from Marte is huge. And we'll see a little bit of power. We'll see the safe batting average too. I like them both. But when you're talking 18 uh, league, I would probably keep Marte over Suzuki. But it's pretty, it's pretty close. 
Uh, Mitch asked Bybee or, or fought a uh, long term. I think you'd, the upside of uh, Bybee is higher. Uh, the floor of fought is, you know, safer. And that's kind of where I see them right now. Would I drop Tyler O'Neill for Lars Newt Bar? Yeah, I mean, I could I could see the case for that. I, the O'Neill situation's weird. Disappointed last year. Um, playing time more recently, a little bit sporadic. He's also just hasn't, you know, shown signs of regaining his form uh, from two years ago. Is there some kind of issue with the manager? Like we've seen that happen too. So yeah, I could see, I could definitely see Newt Bar outperforming Tyler O'Neill fantasy wise this season. So yeah, I, I'm I'm into that. I could I could see doing that. So uh, yeah, that 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 makes sense to me. Uh, before we move on here, just a reminder: Sunday morning means MLB Sunday leadoff. Watch exclusive live games all season long on Peacock this week, featuring an NL showdown as the Cubs take on the Marlins in South Florida. Catch the action live this Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. And if you watched our game over the weekend, the Phillies and the Rockies, and you stuck around for the post game, you saw me on there um, talking with Ahmed Farid and Nick Swisher. I gave some uh, betting picks for the day, uh, which worked out really well. I, I nailed two of them, got a push on the other. Uh, really fun to talk with those guys, and it's going to be a regular thing throughout the season. So check out the game and uh, check me out on the post game show. So a lot of fun. Next up here, uh, MJ Melendez has been killing me at catcher drop for Francisco Alvarez or just ride it out. Uh, I think you're going to get similar frustrations from Alvarez. Honestly, uh, Alvarez has looked a little anxious at the plate. Um, since his call up and he's not necessarily going to be in the lineup every day either. So that's like another frustration point you're going to have to deal with. We did see Alvarez hit his first home run over the weekend. The power is legit. He has a really quick bat, but the approach I'm kind of, there's going to be a learning curve here an adjustment period. And also you have to think about just young catchers in general and everything they have to think about uh, adapting the majors, the speed of the game faster than ever now. Right. Um, and then also just learning these pitchers, you know, I, and working with all sorts of different pitchers with the injuries and the Mets rotation, uh, not easy to do. So I think I'd stick with Melendez or see what else is out there on waivers, but I'm not sure Alvarez is ready to be like a 12 team mixed league contributor just yet. Not dropping yet, but looking for temporary replacement options uh, for Jordan Walker. What you prefer, JD JD Davis? I think you're saying or Ryan McMahon. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, hmm. That is a tough one. I, I think JD Davis is making a real case right now. I got to be honest with you. And I, I tweeted out something this morning. Let me let me pull it up because this just underscores how good JD Davis has been since coming over to the Giants. Big mistake by the Mets to trade JD Davis. So barrel percentage leader since last August one. That's when after the Mets traded JD Davis to the Giants. So number one, Aaron Judge, twenty three point nine percent. Number two, Jordan Alvarez, twenty percent. Number three, Max Muncy, of course, man of 11 home runs so far this season. Number four, J.D. Davis and Teoscar Hernandez tied at 17.3%. Fourth in the majors in that time in barrel percentage, J.D. Davis. And playing a really good third base uh, for the Giants as well. So, hey, good on J.D. Davis. He's still out there in quite a bit of leagues, has multi-position eligibility. I maybe chase that. I, I think... If there's a week we know the Rockies are going to be home, McMahon might have the edge. But um, yeah, I'd say G.D. Davis here. Who has the edge in this trade? Melendez, Anthony Rendon, Vaughn Grissom for William Contreras and Alex Verdugo. Melendez, Anthony Rendon, Vaughn Grissom for... I don't really think a lot about winning a trade in fantasy baseball. I just don't. Uh, to me, it's all about 
the categories you're chasing, the spots on your roster you're trying to fill. Uh, would I rather have William Contreras than MJ Melendez? Yes. Uh, Rendon, I don't necessarily trust to stay healthy. Vaughn Grissom still has questions to answer about being a major league shortstop. So I think it's fine if that's what you're what you're looking for. But to me, it's not always about like who comes out on top in a trade. It's what they could do for you, what categories you're chasing. So yeah, the win trade kind of questions like doesn't do much for me. Raphael, I'm on the fence. Would you drop the Astros Luis Garcia for, for Bybee? I wouldn't do it just because I'm not sure how long Bybee's going to be up. Like, is it a spot start? What is it? And then you drop someone who has a bit more upside. I know Garcia has struggled to begin the year. Is it, you know, having to change his uh, pre-pitch rock the baby thing? Maybe, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, Garcia has been a useful fantasy pitcher not saying Bybee can't either, but is that happening today? Probably not. So I would I would keep Garcia. John, thoughts on Jameson Tyone in a 10-team head-to-head league droppable for higher upside guys like the rookies coming up. Uh, something didn't look right with him even before the uh, IL stint. So in a 10-team league, yeah, I think you could drop uh, Tyone. That's that's fine with me. I was I was big on him coming into the season. I still think he could be good and useful. Uh, prior, you know, prior to the groin injury, you know, it was, it was spotty. It was um, up and down. But yeah, in a ten team league, I think you can be much more. It it sounds counterintuitive because in a ten team league, the pool of players is smaller. But I think you can take more risks in a 10 team type of league because what's out there on the waiver wire there's just a lot more possibilities um the replacement value is is higher than say a deeper league where if you drop someone like a tyone hard to get maybe similar potential but in a 10 team league you can so yeah if you see something intriguing out there even if it is a bybee and like it doesn't work out then so be it maybe time would still be there you know so uh i'm into that So we have about 10 more minutes here, maybe a little bit less. Uh, Brian with a question. Who is your choice rest of season? Bryce Elder, uh, Johan Oviedo, or Eduardo Rodriguez? Hmm. I think I'm going to go with Oviedo here. What we've seen so far has been really, really impressive. And even for Oviedo to go into Colorado... Last week, a start where probably wasn't recommended that you used him, you know, going into Coors Field, a guy who hasn't really proven it yet, proven it uh, to go and pitch a good game there in Colorado. I think that's big. Uh, and in terms of, you know, swinging strike rate, I mean, the, a lot of indicators in Oviedo's favor, not to say Eduardo Rodriguez can't be useful too. it's certainly been encouraging to see what he's done in his last two starts and I think maybe the difference with the Tigers is that their offense is awful. And I'm not sure there's a lot of win potential there for Rodriguez. So if you're splitting hairs between him and Oviedo, I think the Pirates offense, even minus um, O'Neill Cruz is, is pesky. And the Tigers just decidedly not. So maybe Rodriguez is traded at some point during the season. I think most of all, it's just good to see Rodriguez healthy and thriving, but I would take Oviedo and see if like, maybe this is a, a true bounce back campaign um, or breakout rather. Speaking of bounce backs though, Cody Bellinger, Mitch asks, is Cody Bellinger back worth trying to trade for? <laughs> okay. Uh, so let me, I know Bellinger has been a great story so far. No doubt about that. Uh, but let me look at his his plate discipline here and the strikeouts. Let me pull up his page. Sorry. Let's see. Yeah, so I think this is the biggest, most encouraging thing for Cody Bellinger so far. You look at the strikeout rate on Cody Bellinger. It's pretty amazing. 14.1% so far this year. And if you remember when Cody Bellinger won the MVP, his strikeout rate was 16.4%. So... 14.1% so far this year. Last year was 27.3%. So cutting that in half, it was 26.9% in 2021. So that is, that's huge. Remember that year that 
Bellinger won the MVP and that strikeout rate was low. He had 305 um, with a 30, 302 batting average on balls in play. 300 averages here with a 302 batting average on balls in play. Uh, so the strikeout rate lower. I think the lack of the shift helps him a lot. There's power and speed here. Uh, I He's not hitting the ball as hard as he did in his peak with the Dodgers. So I don't think we're going to see that that player. Uh, the expected batting average is 261 right now just because of the quality of contact hasn't been as high. But this version of Bellinger is a pretty good player. Um, so I think as long as we kind of recognize maybe we've seen the best of Cody Bellinger, I think he could still be good. But you're buying high, and it, it kind of depends on what the other manager wants because I'm sure whoever that manager is wants to sell high too so it's going to vary league to league uh what the offers might be uh and what you might have to give up but just keep in mind whoever has bellinger is probably going to want to sell high so speaking of sell high is adolis garcia a candidate to sell high i don't think so uh i i mentioned garcia uh on the fan on the circling the basis podcast yesterday and why wouldn't you you know, five for five, three homer game on Saturday. And Adolis Garcia is like one of those guys where we're kind of waiting for the wheels to fall off, you know, and it just hasn't happened over the past two years. And I'm I'm guilty of that too. I, I thought he was a fade last year and he put up awesome numbers. He had a great year. And then this year, he looks legit. Um you know, 28 RBIs, 19 runs scored, seven homers, granted three of those in the same game. But uh, the thing that I like the most from Anolis Garcia is the improvement in the strikeout rate. So 2021, the year where he broke out and there were the red flags of the strikeout rate, 31.2%, right? Last year, small improvement, 27.9% strikeout rate. This year so far, 21.5%. So putting the ball into play more often, I think, gives you more of a safer floor. He has the speed, too. Batting, batting average on balls in play so far this year is just 237. That's not so great, but, I mean, I think that's bound to improve. His expected batting average is 282 uh, so far this year. So you combine that progress he's made with contact with the quality of contact that he's giving and you see actually batting average upside who knows if he can keep this up but these kind of contact numbers strikeout rate that tends to stabilize uh faster than a lot of these other things that we see so i'm i'm into i'm into garcia right now i do not see him as a as a sell high granted selling off a three homer game never a bad idea depends on what you need on your your roster how uh how healthy your outfield is, if you need a starting pitcher, whatever. So cases, uh, you know, they certainly vary. We got a couple more minutes here. Jamie with a question: A fourteen-team categories league, would you trade Anthony Rizzo and Christian Javier for Mookie Betts? My other starters are Cease, Darvish, Sonny Gray, Rodon, and Heaney. Hmm. I think I would do it. Yeah. I mean, Mookie hasn't had the most amazing start to the season, but certainly I, I love the situation there in LA. I think there's lots of volume, lots of counting stats on the way, maybe not at the peak uh, Mookie bets, but still to me, someone who's like first or second round quality uh, Rizzo, I worry about health, his ability to stay on the field. Javier, I think is a, fantasy ace in the making potentially but their pitcher is and by virtue of being a pitcher there's always that injury risk so i go for position players over pitchers most of the time so uh i yeah i think i'm into that one let's see eloy jimenez or teoscar hernandez rest of season great question uh i think they're pretty close to me but let me pull up their pages just to see what they have each been up to so far. Sorry. 
So Eloy Jimenez, definitely, you know, the slow start thus far. His strikeout rate is up quite a bit, which is a little bit concerning. Teoscar Hernandez, I think his power is going to play regardless of, you know, where he plays moving from uh, Toronto there to Seattle. And uh, his numbers have been a little bit better, at least as far as fantasy numbers, but his strikeout rate is up as well. I think Jimenez, if you keep in mind the injury history there, uh, Hernandez is probably the better play moving forward. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'd, I'm, I think they're both going to be very valuable uh, fantasy options throughout the course of the season. But uh, yeah, I think I'd rather have Teoscar Hernandez just figuring in the power and uh, and the injury history there. So I'm going to do one more here. And someone I'm glad that's being mentioned uh, is Josh Lowe. So this person is wondering, are the strikeouts a concern? I think they have been a concern. Um throughout his, you know, minor league career and major league career, 33% last year, a third of the time, this is in 180, 198 plate appearances he struck out. So far this year, the strikeouts have been pretty manageable. He's basically cut that strikeout rate in half. It's 17.2%. Pretty amazing turnaround, honestly. Uh, you know, four homers, four steals, just really filling up the box score there. If he can even keep the strikeout rate in the low 20s, I think we're looking at a vastly different profile than we thought coming out of last year. You know, we're only talking about 64 plate appearances for, for Josh Lowe so far this year. So I'm not I'm not sure how sustainable it is, but what we are seeing is encouraging. So hopefully we see more of that. Um, certainly a, a key contributor for a raised team where seemingly everybody's interesting. You know, Harold Ramirez has been a popular uh, waiver wire pickup in recent days. So uh, lots of lots of good stuff going on with the Rays right now. That will do it for me. Uh, thank you all for joining me once again. And I'll be back here next Tuesday for another fantasy baseball Q&A. You can follow me on Twitter at DJ Short. Uh, rem- remember to subscribe to the Circling the Bases podcast. Uh, We're going to do another episode tomorrow, myself and Scott Pianowski, our Waiver Wire Wednesday episode. Uh, So definitely check that out. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you next week.